Who's my favorite student? I am. No, good old Am. She gets everything right. Um, okay, a half mark for each blank here. So there's going to be 16 blanks. It's going to be out of eight. Acids are substances that dissolve in water in order to release, I hope it's going to be H plus ions. Yep. And I'll probably cross that out. Oh, wait a minute. It says some will be more used more than once. So I guess I can't use the cross out approach. Oh, that's mean of them. Acids are characterized by a pH value less than seven. Hey, by the way, you guys want something stupid to help you remember things? Look up. That's a greater than. That's a less than. Kids get them mixed up. Look up. What capital letter does that look like? L for less than. That's a less than symbol. Use it if you want. So I've been doing it ever since I was in grade nine. Anytime I think less than, I write an L. But I just tilt it. Now it's a less than symbol. You guys ever been showed that one? No? The whole alligator, alligator. bird, it never made sense to me. I never understood that. But L for less than, that my brain, maybe my brain works differently from yours, probably. Um, anyways, so less than, or you could write the word less than. Uh, the blank, the pH, the, more, the lower the pH, the more acidic. When acid is added, okay, I got to look at my yellow sheet. When acid is added, blue litmus turns red. Uh, when the base is added, red litmus turns blue. That's why they have red and blue litmus actually just in one line on your yellow sheet. You didn't do it. You've been on a roll. I've been impressed. Uh, and phenylphthalein, which is fun to say. Um, what did you say for this? I don't have my yellow sheet, and I haven't bothered memorizing these because it, it remains colorless. Yeah. Why didn't they say remains clear? Clear and colorless are, colorless are very, very different. Coca-Cola is clear because you can see through it if you hold it up to the light. It's not colorless. So colorless means looks like water. Clear means oh, you can see through it, but it could be still a colored liquid. Yep. Thank you for telling me and not having me find out the hard way. OK. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. Uh, so you guys said uh, remains colorless, right? Color, and I'll spell it like a proud Canadian with a U. Colorness, colorless. Good gosh, do it. Uh, acidic solutions, Cameron, what'd you say? No. Yep. Now, unfortunately, so do bases. Well, how does that happen? Well, there are many other solutions out there. So if you're in a CSI lab and you've got a mystery liquid and it conducts electricity, well, it could be an acid or a base. Oh, and we did a lab on identifying whether it's an acid or a base using color changes. So you can go even further than that. Uh, acids are responsible for? What do, uh, what do bases? Oh, I bet you they're going to ask me that in the next line. Never mind. Bases are subst uh, substances that dissolve in water. They release hydroxide ions, OH negative ions. Bases are characterized by a pH value greater than 7. Uh, the blank, the pH, the, more, the higher. So, oh, actually, I think I asked it. Never mind. When a base is added, oh, red litmus turns blue. Is that right from the chart? I'm kind of reading cams upside down from a distance, but I think I got it. And phenylphthalein, sorry, turns pink. We didn't play with that one, but it's really quite a dramatic. If you Google or go to YouTube, you can see people demonstrating with it. Turns pink. Uh, basic solutions also conduct electricity. So what doesn't conduct? To, well, we'll be looking at some other stuff that does not. Uh, oh, bases. What do bases taste like? Bitter. Coffee is somewhat basic. Not very, but somewhat. Well, soap. I'm assuming all of you in the shower at least once have gotten some shampoo or some soap in your mouth. That's basic taste. So if you're bored sometime on the weekend, try licking a bar of soap. You've now tasted a base. Oh, I wrote basic. Bitter. So 
So a half mark for each of those. Give yourself a little score right there out of eight. <laughs> Label the following as an acid or a base. A, B, A, Chaku, B, Abab. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember, another word for basic is alkaline. And they will use that on the provincial, so I'll throw it at you. Turn the page. What is not a characteristic of acids? Acids uh, turn litmus red. They form H2 gas. That was the bubbles from the magnesium. That was hydrogen bubbles dropping. Uh, they form salts. You guys learned that last lesson. Yeah, bitter taste. And I could have circled that. But often on a multiple choice, I'll use a process of elimination to really convince myself I'm right. Which of the following, uh, you know what, C. Number six, I like number six, I like number six, I like number six. Number six is a nice question. Why would I say that? Really? Lydia, it's gonna be on the test. I'm going to ask you how many times more acidic or basic something is. And the classic one, kids see, oh, a pH of 3.5 and a pH of 6.5, they say this is wrong, three. It's not right. What is it? You can either go 10 to the three or a one with three zero. It's a thousand times more alkaline. Or if I ask the question in the reverse order, if I said how many times more acid is the 3.5 than the 6.5, it's a thousand times more acid because acid is in the smaller direction, but it's still a difference of three. Oh, how many times more acidic is milk than ammonia? Thank you. Milk is six, ammonia is 11. The difference is five. I know it's negative five, but the neg I'm not going to say negative five. It's in the smaller direction. I'm going to say it's acidic. It's going to be 10 to the fifth times or one, two, three, four, five. It's 100,000 times more acidic than ammonia, which is why milk doesn't clean windows well. You can laugh, but ser seriously. Ammonia, the re one, of the com one of the consequences of being basic is ammonia bonds very well with grease. Milk, not so much. Suppose you are testing an unknown liquid, ah, a little CSI. When you put blue litmus paper in it, the paper turns red. So I already know it's gotta be less than seven, it's acid. When you add methyl orange, the liquid turns yellow. Okay, I gotta look at this. Methyl orange goes yellow at around pH. I'm gonna say somewhere between four and seven. If you said 3.5 to seven, if you said 3.5 to 6.5, but definitely it can't be bigger than seven. And I don't think it's less than three. Is that right? One mark for each blank. Is that okay? Really, Mr. Do yeah. We have to be able to balance equations. There's going to be some balancing equations on this test as well. And on the next test. And you know what, Cameron, that means you're normal. It is tough. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding when I said this is the single toughest concept. By the way, I, if I haven't apologized to you, I'm going to. I don't think I may be able to get the second test, the next test on this first report card. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. If I can't, I'll email all of your parents and I'll tell them, disregard this first report card as an academic uh, update. It's got one test. Which test? The hardest one of the year. That's a terrible report card. And if, if we hadn't started later, I'd have more on it. But anyways, it is what it is. I can't control it. So let's balance. Cam, I'm going to pick on you because we need to get the hang of this. And I apologize, but let's walk through this, okay? Let's first of all count how many lithiums on the left. Let's go Li equals one. You know what? Let's go one compound, at, one element at a time. How many lithiums on the right? Hey, maybe it's balanced. Well, let's keep going. How many CLs on the left? How many CLs on the right? I'm already thinking I might end up putting a two in front of that LICL on the left. How many LEDs, how many PBs on the left? How many PBs on the right? Okay. 
I'm already still thinking about that too. How many, and I'm going to treat this as one funky molecule because it's in brackets, how many NO3s? How many NO3s on the right? A lot of kids want to say three. No. One NO3. Okay. I'll give you a half mark if you got that right and everything else wrong. But for now, let's keep going. Oh, we said let's try this, right? That's going to give me two of those and two of those which at least balances the chlorines, but now what's out of balance? The lithiums. How could I fix that? That gives me two of those and two of those. And, oh! Balanced. For two marks, what I would really do is if you put a two there, that gets you a half. If you left that blank, that gets you a half. If you left that blank, or put a one there, that gets you a half. And if you put a two there, that gets you a half. That's how I mark these usually. But there you go. Did you get that on the quiz? Give yourself one out of two right now on that question, because you and I did it together. Okay? 1.5. Give yourself 1.5. B, oh, these are tougher. Okay. <sighs> these are tougher. Pick on you again? You want the marks? Yeah. Okay. So, how many C's on the left? Four. On the right? One. I'm already thinking of four, in but let's keep going. How many H's on the left? On the right? How many O's on the left? On the right. Wrong. How many O? Oh, three. And I have a feeling that's going to be a pain because I have an even number of O's and an odd number of O's. And that's usually when these got yuckier. But talk me through this. What do I start with first? Save the O's and H's for last. In fact, I usually go non-H's and O's, then hydrogens, then oxygens. That's usually my strategy. So carbons. I totally agree. That's going to make that a four. Hang on. What else is that going to change? Not eight. How many here? Eight. Ah, nine. And I'm glad, Cam, you did that because it tur if you can't count the individual atoms, it's impossible to balance these. You'll never get the right answer unless you, you know, your pencil barfs on the page in a fluke, right? Okay. Oh, I've seen some questions where you would have sworn the pencil just threw up all over the page trying desperately to get something. Try marking these sometimes. Believe me, that's what it looks like sometimes. Right? You guys know what I mean when I say your pencil threw up, right? You, you've all had a question or two where you're, oh, yeah, anything desperate, you know. Keep going now. Okay, carbons, we're happy. Let's try the H's. Five right there, that gives me 10 of those. Now, if we're lucky, maybe that fixes the O's. How many O's here? Eight and five is? Okay. Everything else is balanced. So what I want is a total of 13 O's, which really means since it's an O2, what I would put there is a 6.5. I mean, it works. Is that legal? Say no. no. So now, who remembers this trick that I showed you? What can I do? Julia, Julie. You uh, say that with authority in your voice. I'm going to multiply everything by two. Times by two. Times by two times by two, times by two. That will work. And if you count them all, it will. We, let's do it really quickly. I won't write it out. But how many C's? Eight. How many C's? Eight. How many H's? 20. How many H's? 20. How many O's? 26. 16 and 10. 26. So that trick there is a good one to have. Otherwise, you could be fumbling around 
for a while. Again, half mark, half mark, half mark, half mark. But if you got all that wrong, but you got the black numbers initially counted right, you get a 0.5. Oh, this is going to be similar as well. Oh, give yourself a one because you couldn't quite get it all the way, kiddo. All right. You want to do the last one together? Sure. It's three marks. How many C's? Three. three. How many C's? One. I'm already thinking there's going to be a three in front of it. I'll put that in my back pocket, but pretty sure. How many H's? Three. How many H's? Uh, two. two. How many O's? Two. How many O's? Careful. Yep. Okay. Well, start with that. That's going to give me three of those. That gives me six plus one. Nice and loud with authority. I guess, right? How many H's on the left? How many H's do I need on the right? How can I do that? Put a four there. Eight. Okay, now how many O's? Six plus four. Oh, this is even much easier. How can I change this into ten O's? Which? Which? Oh, five. See? That's balanced. I don't need to use that decimal times by two trick. Uh, one CH, sorry, one C3H8 plus five O2's yields three carbon dioxides and four water molecules. Half mark, half mark, half mark, half mark. You can give yourself a 1.5 there. Can you give yourself, please, a total score out of 26? Make sure your name is on them, pass them in. If you didn't do it, you got some homework. So what did we say, very quickly? We defined what a salt was. We said a salt was what was produced when you mixed an acid and a base a carbonate, which I really haven't talked about yet with an acid, <coughs> or expose a metal to an acid. And we said, oh, the common thing there is acids. Salts are used all over the place. The main thing we talked about was what we called an acid-base neutralization. Those of you that were away, you can get the notes later, but just kind of watch. We said since acids and bases are opposites of each other on that yellow sheet, if you mix them together in water, they neutralize each other. In fact, they're going to combine. And the way they're going to combine that is predictable. This hydrogen from the acid and this OH from the base is going to become HOH. Actually, it's going to become HHO. Actually, it's going to become H2O. Okay, what's H2O? You're going to get water. And then the metal from the base is going to combine with the non-metal from the acid. This is the time, Julia, we were able to mm -hmm. Don't know what you're looking at. I hope it wasn't your phone. Move your binder for me, please. Thank you. So I can convince myself that you weren't being foolish. This is our first time, Julia, where I'm, we're starting to predict the outcome of a reaction. I'm giving you the, the reactants, and you're saying, I can figure out the products. Part of the homework I said you were able to do was uh, number one. In fact, I think we did that really, really, really quickly. We said, what's a salt? What's an acid? What's a base? That you need to know. And we did it by a process of elimination. We said, oh, acid starts with H or has the word acid in it. Base ends in OH or ends in the word hydroxide. Everything else was a salt. Oh, metal, nonmetal. We balanced some more equations, lots of them. Then we talked about an oxide. An oxide contains what it sounds like oxygen. These are compounds that contain a metal ion and oxygen. They produce basic solutions. So if you mix sodium oxide and water, you're going to get two NaOH sodium hydroxide atoms. If you mix CaO calcium oxide and water, you're going to get calcium hydroxide. <sighs> we also have nonmetal oxides. Those were chemical compounds that contained oxygen, and a nonmetal. Those produced acids. And this is what we're going to pick up. Is everybody there? Anybody not have the notes? I'll damage your self-esteem, but I'll make sure. I'd rather have you follow along. You got them okay, Sage? Okay. This is a problem, this uh, nonmetal oxides. This explains much of acid rain and environmental damage, because it turns out 
For example, if you combine SO2, silicon dioxide, this is covalent, with water, you get sulfurous acid. Okay. Pause here. Turn the page. So what? Well, turns out when we burn fossil fuels, Allison, keep up with us here. Don't fall behind trying to get caught up. It's just one of my peeves when I see someone trying to catch you. You're missing the current stuff, and now you're falling behind twice. You can get the other stuff. I put it online. You can get it later. Okay? So what? Turns out when we burn fossil fuels, oil and coal, they combine with oxygen to form non-metal oxides. Then it rains. Well, if you add water to a non-metal oxide at the very end of yesterday's lesson on the previous page, what did I say? If you combine a non-metal oxide and water, what do they produce? This is acid rain, okay? Producing So here's a picture. We don't battle with acid rain as much out here in Western Canada. In Eastern Canada, it's a huge issue. In fact, it's such a huge issue that the lakes were becoming too acidic for fish to, in fact, there are a bunch of lakes that are completely sterile. No life could survive. And so I kid you not, what the government has to do is they have to add bases to the lakes to neutralize the acid so that fish and seaweed and other things can survive. So it looks like this. We burn stuff. Because it's burned at a high temperature, the gases carry it up into the atmosphere, often sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. What's the common thread? Oxygen, oxides, non-metal oxides. They get carried by the wind into a cloud is there water in clouds, which is useful for growing crops? Not so useful, Courtney, for our environment. The gases dissolve in the rainwater to form acid rain, which can then kill plant life, pollute rivers and streams, can erode stonework. Hey, here's a picture. These are before and after. Picture on the left is from 1908. Picture on the right is from 1968. What do you think happened? Acid rain. Acid rain. Yeah. Well, if you're sending a large amount of fossil fuels into the air, and it also depends on rain currents, so out east, they generate almost all of their electricity by uh, burning coal. Here in BC, we don't. We generate very little electricity from coal. How do we generate most of our electricity? Okay, we use hydroelectric dams, which are also a problem. Although there's very little greenhouse gases in producing the electricity, we didn't realize when we dammed up all these streams that we were wrecking our salmon runs. But they're dammed now, so we're, okay, we're... No pun intended, damned if we do, damned if we don't. We built the dams, we're stuck with it. Okay, but at least as a positive, it doesn't give us out here the acid rain problems that they have, say, in Ontario or in the eastern U.S. So in the states or in the provinces where they have good hydroelectric power or other ways to generate electricity, it's not as big an issue. It is still somewhat because of cars. But really, it's the coal-fired plants that really produce a lot of the toxic stuff. Coal is bad. It really is. Even hydroelectric ain't that great. I think we should be going nuclear. Nuclear? Yeah, I'll talk about that in a couple of chapters when we look at radiation. You'll hear me go on my, I think nuclear power is better rant. But, pardon me? Actually, most of them don't. And we'll talk about why that can't happen for a good reactor. It can only happen for a very poorly designed reactor. That Canada makes a really good reactor called the Can-Do Reactor. Works very well. Answered your question okay, Dylan? Okay. Uh, for some reason on my handout, the dates didn't stay there, but they stayed on yours, right? Okay. So, next page. 
acids react with metals. This is our third thing. So we had acid base. We had oxidization. Third one, acids react with metals to produce H2 gas, hydrogen gas. What you guys in that color change lab called bubbles. The most reactive metals are the, oh, we know this from Science 9. What are the most reactive metals on our periodic table, the ones that explode when we drop them in water? Alkali metals, column number one. And the lower you go on the periodic table, more reactive. Francium is reactive enough that, in all honesty, it's very difficult to even get it to exist in the real world because it wants to react with anything, oxygen or anything. So it basically, unless you're using some very, very clever containers, it's going to boom and react with the container. So here is an example of an acid plus a metal. Now look at it. Can you tell, Jasmine, how I know that it's an acid plus a metal? What's the first chemical, first compound there? HCl. How do I know that's an acid? Okay. Oh, and then magnesium is a metal. So in fact, this is the one that we did in our lab. I gave you a small, that, in case you're wondering, uh, solution A from the lab was hydrochloric acid. Not very strong. I think it was about a pH of 4, I think is what I did. And when you drop magnesium into it, you got magnesium chloride, a salt, plus hydrogen gas. Bubbles is what you saw. Bubbles is what you saw. So I'd like you to take a couple of minutes. Can you find in your textbook, you need one textbook per group. From Rachel, thank you. Uh, practice problem, sorry, uh, reading check, page 238. Write your answers to the question. Or do you want to do them together as a group? Okay, don't zone out then, no phones. Max is gonna sit up, Julia's gonna smile. Quick look of money. So I'm gonna go to page 238, which I think I have here. Oh, I haven't printed it up yet, hang on. Pause. What two types of pure substances are produced from an acid-base neutralization reaction? Okay. Salt and water. You guys are okay if I always abbreviate water as H2O? We're sciencey enough that I can do that, yeah? And what's the salt? It's gonna be the non-metal from the acid and the metal from the base. Crisscross them properly, they'll combine. Hey, one environmental problem is associated with the burning of coal and gasoline. When a non-metal oxide is mixed with water, with rainwater, does the water become acidic or basic? Acid rain. Okay. I don't know if it's still the case, but I know when I was in school in Ontario, in northern Ontario, there were thousands of little tiny lakes, ponds or small lakes, that were lifeless because of the acid rain. We've gotten better about pollution in the environment, but I don't know if they've been able to uh, revive those lakes or if they were permanently dead. Pardon me? A uh, acid doesn't mean uh, flammable, right? It just means that uh, life is not gonna survive very well in it. Uh, when a metal oxide is mixed with water, does the water become acidic or basic? Check your notes, what do we say? Okay. Back to our notes. 
So instead of writing them down below, we just did them together. Let's keep going. Uh, I guess for you guys, it's turn the page. Oh, homework. Practice problems on page 238. This is going to be part of your homework. That's those five questions on the bottom there. It is balancing equations. Try them on a separate piece of paper. Hey, and I know, but you know what? I got to keep ripping the band-aid off until you get used to it, kiddo. The answers are on page 592. Make sure you check your answers. Here's the last thing we're going to talk about. Almost done. The last thing I talked about was acids and carbonates. Do you have your pink periodic table? On the back, on the polyatomic ions, what's carbonate? CO3. CO3. Are there any others that have the word carbonate in them? Or is it just that one? Okay. So these are all what we call carbonates. Turns out rocks contain a great deal of what's CO2? Carbon dioxide. Can I use that as an abbreviation for the rest of the year? You get, okay. Um, in the form of carbonate ions. So what did you tell me the formula for carbonate was? CO3. What's its charge? Okay. Can you see that if that loses an oxygen, what will it turn into? It's CO2, okay, or it's really CO2 with an extra oxygen, okay? So there's lots of carbon dioxide, it turns out, stored in rocks, which a lot of kids find counterintuitive because they think carbon dioxide's a gas and rocks are solid. It's, it's bonded. Sometimes when things bond, they turn solid. When acid rain, yep. Uh, two negative. Two negative? Yeah. I should never have trusted Dylan now that I let him move. Okay. When acid rain falls on them, the carbonate helps to neutralize the acid. Uh, releasing carbon dioxide in the process. When acid rain, and this is something, uh, Dylan, that we are dealing with. When acid rain falls on certain types of rocks, limestone and other types of rocks, it turns out as it erodes the rocks, the rocks give off carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Sulfuric acid is one component of acid precipitation. The equation is that, I wrote here, rewrite in English from your pink sheet, what's H2SO4 called? Okay, so if I was rewriting this in English, it would be sulfuric acid plus, or combines with, what would I call CaCO3? What's the first question I always ask when I'm naming or writing a formula? Ionic or covalent? Calcium, metal or non-metal? So ionic, so it's not going to be tetra or di or mono. It's going to be just the I'd rule. Oh, wait a minute. Calcium, is it multivalent? Do I got to bring out the Roman numerals? Oh, okay. So it's going to be plus calcium. What's CO3? Carbonate. Carbonate. Forms, combined to form. CaSO4. Ionic or covalent? Calcium metal ionic. Multivalent? No, no Roman numerals. So it's going to be forms calcium, what the heck is SO4? Sulfate, sulfate not sulfide, not sulfit, sulfite, because they all look alike to me. Which one? Sulfate. It is sulfate. I always got to be careful on those. Sulfate. H2O. Hey, I know this one. Water and CO2. Covalent, one carbon, di oxide. That's a practice to get used to rewriting going from formula to name. 
what we're really saying here, Jaden, is this. Um, the sulfuric acid that we spew from burning fuels combines with limestone or other carbonates in the rocks, and you get calcium sulfate water, and CO2 is released from the rocks. Believe it or not, greenhouse gases don't just come from cars. A lot of carbon is stored in the earth, and that's also being released. Moral of the story, Connor, is we need to do better with the environment. Unfortunately, it's going to be your problem. I will probably be dead before the major environmental issues occur. Probably you folks will be about my age. I have read some studies that suggest that Prince George, who knows where Prince George is? So I have read one study that says by 2050, Prince George will have the same climate as Kelowna, which if that's accurate, and we are doing some guesswork, that's a huge change because Prince George is up north and cold and Kelowna is not up north and cold. Hey, recycle, try and go green. Here's our summary, and then I'm going to shut up. Acid plus base gives And you can make a little note. These are, you're going to have to kind of memorize these combinations. But I think, Sage, if you do the homework, you'll commit them to memory. Because, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have picked Sage. I think, Alex, if you do the homework, you'll commit them to OK. Acid plus metal. Who remembers? I'll give you a hint. It gives a salt. Plus what? Ah, this was the bubbles. OK. Salt plus no, nope, I want the other one. H2. Acid plus a carbonate. Acid plus something that has a CO3 attached. Gives a salt plus. Look at the reaction above. What were the second two products? Water and CO2, carbon dioxide. And then we had metal oxides. That was a metal plus oxygen. We had non-metal oxide. That was a non-metal plus oxygen. They gave opposites. The non-metal oxide plus water gave an acidic solution, acid rain. So if they're opposites, what would a metal oxide plus water give? Yep. A basic solution. And I'm not going to call it basic rain, but there are places uh, where everything is very, very alkali, very, very basic. Uh, in Utah, on the salt flat areas, a lot of the water there that you're getting from the ground, from your wells, is very, very, very basic. It smells kind of funny. It tastes kind of funny. You actually have to run it through a purifier before you can use it. And you'll, it feels very, very slippery. I go to a place on Gabriola Island every summer, and there, whenever you take a shower, it feels like the soap didn't wash off. You leave the shower feeling all, it, it's the water. The water is very basic. You had a question? I have no idea what, I heard the word CO3 and I heard the word if. Louder, sorry Jess? Um, carbon, dioxide. carbon dioxide is CO2. Okay, so this is going to be an acid plus something with a CO3 in it. But when it combines, one of the oxygens gets ripped off. It actually joins the water because water is H2O. And that leaves carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Does that make sense? It's a complicated reaction, but it's important because there are far too many people that don't believe this is the case and run our government. Right? What's your homework? First of all, you can now finish all of this thing. Okay? So you can work on section 5.2 salts homework. 
And then from the textbook, I said, try page 243. First of all, on the same page, you can do uh, these five questions, balance these five equations, predict the results. It's saying each reaction will produce a salt and hydrogen. I'll help you with it if you get stuck. And then I said on page 243, here 243, here page 243, I said you can try every one of these. We need to practice this. Do you need to write out the questions? Nope. Okay, so number one, what's the definition of a salt? That's right from the notes. What's a neutralization? Acid plus base. Uh, you can fill those out fairly quickly. Number seven, you can actually cross off. But for what it's worth, why is calcium carbonate added to some lakes in eastern Canada? They're so acidic. Believe it or not. Page two, I don't know, what does it say at the bottom of the notes? 243? Hey, clever boy. Now, here are some uh, to work with. This does not have the answers in the back. I will go over these with you on Friday if you're stuck. You can also check with a neighbor, but I'll go over the answers with you on Friday, okay? Certainly number nine should be pretty good. Is it an acid, a base, a salt, or none of the above? Okay. Uh, 11 is asking about litmus. Yeah, that's fair game. 12 is asking about litmus. Sure, 11 and 12 are a bit tricky, and I'll talk about those next class as well.